In this run from Land's End to John O'Groats, we're not taking the accepted direct route, nor are we after records. We shall leave the beaten track, we shall jump here, there, sometimes short distances, sometimes big mileages, but we hope to interest you in this Britain of ours and in our product. Well, we're on a Blue Hills mine, a bleak part of the Cornish coast, makes a good test for the popular model. This desolate, disused mine provides a surface that's as uneven as a tank practicing ground. Not that it worries the car, as you can see. This old water wheel pump still runs night and day, keeping the mines dry. The test hill which the V8 is climbing is one of the chief features of the London Land's End trials. The sharp hairpin bend is negotiated just as easily by the popular as the V8. These cars love rough going. This wonderfully efficient suspension which has always been a Ford feature for the last 25 years, takes the specially prepared hazards without a murmur. The V8, too. another V8, a cabriolet. Like the thoroughbred it is, it takes everything in its stride. It could go on like this all day, and then be ready to speed safely on a long journey. difficult with such charming places like Coombe Martin within the car's easy reach. Devonshire is a paradise for the motorists. Cottages with roses round the doors, streams with quaint old bridges built in delightful harmony. And nowhere do you see such whitewashed cottages and incidentally water splashes. This is Newton St. Sire. And here's the V8, comfortably taking a rather sharp bend. With a short turning radius, it's such a great asset, whether in the country or in busy traffic. It's as important as quick acceleration. Did you notice the driver's hands were up? Now that is smooth braking. So is this. If you must just miss an oncoming vehicle, it's quite safe with such responsive steering. Northward bound. Here's a good example of modern transport, motor coach, car and train. If cars had smooth rills to run on, driving would be simple. Not so with test hills like Beggar's Roost. Carrying two up, the popular takes the famous hump comfortably. The V8, of course, takes it at speed, like it does most gradients and surfaces. That's the norm, eating up the miles so quickly that, well, here we are in Wales. Of all the beauty spots, and there are many, few are more attractive than the district round the Cada Idris. With the V8, it's child's play, of course.
In good company, the popular with a special sports body climbs the hill just as comfortably. Whilst we're on hills and V8s, we'll go over to Portnent, a tiny village on a bleak part of the Carnarvon coast. It's just a little corner of civilization. The post box tells of its remoteness. Next collection, Thursday. One solitary trek known as Screw Hill connects the village with the outside world, but only a sleigh could traverse its steep, uneven surface. The inhabitants said they'd never seen a big saloon car in the village before, and when the V8 started to climb the track, they shook their heads. Impossible, they said. The steep gradients varying from one in two and a half to one in six, the six hairpin bends and the loose surface made the hill an impossible climb. There's no other road out of the village, and failure meant backing down again, being shipped from the jetty on a 12-hour man-hauling job to the top. But today, motor engineers seek new wells or hills to conquer. This product of their skill takes gradients, bends and surfaces with such ease that the half-mile ascent was covered in under two minutes. Twice in half an hour, the V8 conquered Screw Hill. The unclimbable was climbed. And a sea, North Wales, where overlooking the sand dunes is a lighthouse soft, but which has become a comfortable home. The Lantern House makes a fine lookout place. It's a unique home, and so is the caravan, really. This V8 is towing a car like caravan and taking it over rough ground as if it were a... The fine streamlining effect of the caravan has been obtained without sacrificing comfort, and there's nothing cramped or lacking. It has everything you need for a holiday, and if friends call, there's plenty of room for them. Sleeping accommodation is almost Ritz-like in its luxurious ease. In the meantime, the V8 runs out alone to enjoy the rough going. You know, all Ford vehicles are built to stay. Age doesn't seem to matter, for here's a two-year-old 500-weight Ford van thoroughly enjoying itself in a field. With only a light load, it was purposely skidding to an apparently alarming degree. We say apparently because the danger is not real owing to the finely balanced chassis. in Derbyshire, where we went to take pills, not the waters, we found a Jenkins Chapel, a Ford with a sports body about to do the climb. The west part of this test hill is an acute bend, and only cars with very short turning radius can take it clearly like this. That was very good, so we joined the popular in a climb up Blacker's Mill, another nasty test hill. It has an acute gradient and a wicked surface. 
By the way, these are not specially prepared stunt cars. Except in the sports, they're standard models. Hills in the district. On the lower roads, the popular became very impatient and couldn't wait for a clear run. So it just passed on the side, the driver knowing that the perfect suspension would make it quite safe. Watch again from a different angle. There are two roads to the summit. The actual slack is so acute that an alternative road was made. Here's the parting of the ways. On the right is the test hill and on the left the other road. The V8 took the test in its usual easy manner. The two small brothers took the alternative, which is practically as steep. Farther up the two roads meet again. On. There are strange sights in this world. This lifeboat, for instance. Bought at a sale, its owner had it transported to his house, and there it rests by the roadside with only memories and the dogs to keep it company. Say a Ford engine unit like this. These engine units are used for everything imaginable. Searchlights, cranes, trolleys, motor launches, in fact, almost anything that needs power. see, this one has a horse box on it. Nowadays, old friend Dobbin demands and gets a high standard of comfort. There's plenty of room for two in this Ford, which contains all the refinements that thoroughbred hunters require. to a meet. These trucks are off to take coal direct from the pit head to the householder. A fleet of Ford trucks is used for delivery, must be sure. They're real utility vehicles, and that is the name of these Fordsons, land utility tractors. Pneumatic tired, they're capable of running on land or farm. It's hauling a rotary cultivator that plows and harrows in operation. It prepares the ground for sowing and then takes upon itself a seed drilling attachment. We ran across this one at one of the many demonstrations that are constantly taking place all over the country. Work. Behind it follows a disc harrow and roller. While we're on the subject of farming, we'll stop for a moment at Mr. Fegan's training farm, where boys are taught every phase of farm life. Simplicity is a definite feature of these tractors. They're used a good deal on this training farm, which aims at making the boys modern and efficient farmers. Made to country life today. In town, we visit the shops in the cathedral, and they're being used for demonstrations all over the country, having covered thousands of miles of this sort of thing. Here's the two-tonner in slow motion. This view of the Fordson Surrey six-wheeler shows the wonderful springing. Now the six-wheel attachment. Notice not only the up and down action, but the lateral movement. Cab room is very good on these trucks, seating three comfortably.
The popular is very roomy, and to those that can't get in can always stand on the running board. There's strength and power to carry them. Eight of them, a veritable Samson. It's about time we were on the road again, so we'll make a long jump of it to the Scottish border. And there's the famous spot where, so the notice tells, 10,000 marriages have been performed. Originally, before the law was changed, most of them were eloping couples who couldn't obtain stern parents' consent. Let's hope the adventures were worth it 10,000 times. Our next, northward we go to Loch Lomond, the largest and most beautiful of the Scottish lochs. In the background majestically rises Ben Lomond, set proudly in a fine range of hills. Later, along a beautiful winding road in the Trossets, where twines the path, they say up here. In addition to sheer beauty, Loch Katrin has a further claim to fame. It is the chief source of Glasgow's water supply, and Glaswegians drink about 70 million gallons a day, a dry lot. The lock is dammed, and sluice gates release the water to the great reservoir to Guy. Mathematically speaking, one inch of rainfall in the district gives Glasgow one week's supply of water, and no scotch. It must want a long porter pipeline to the city. A big task, but not quite so bad when you can use excavators like this priestman cub. It's driven, of course, by a Ford engine and cutting a ten feet deep trench. If you want to use it for removing surface soil, it's perfectly simple. It's almost uncanny in its similarity to human shoveling. We're nearing the pass of Glencoe now by the new road. This bus was the scene of a terrible massacre of the McDonald's by the Campbells following the Jacobite Rebellion. Today a monument is the only evidence for the countryside exudes peace and charm. Far north to Glen Nevis, where in this wild spot streams rush down in torrents, forming delightful falls. Overlooking this picturesque glen is Britain's highest mountain, Ben Nevis, shrouded in a mantle of clouds. Now Loch Ness, the haunt of the alleged monster. Had we seen it, we should have filmed it, but it's either very shy or it's just a myth. On the coast lies Ala Poo. It's rather an extraordinary town in that it's built on a narrow strip of land projecting out to the sea. Ala Poo is really a long line of whitewashed cottages bordering the one road to take all the traffic. Back to the coast road for our last lap from Thurso to John O'Groats. And here we are at the northernmost point of Scotland, at 
Like all visitors, we must send a postcard home. Lens end to John O'Groats, perhaps the one ambition of most motorists. There's plenty to see and much to interest, but the tour can only be enjoyed if the car is reliable. With a Ford, you can be assured of a trouble-free journey. From the high and rugged coast of Land's End to the low and even shore of John O'Groats.